I, I, and I just found out, he sent it last week, and I just found, it, I found out I had the list yesterday before I went on the radio. So uh, we're going to pass some of those out, and, then what, and it's your responsibility to take that list, go and get some copies of Xerox on your own, and pass it to the other people. You see? So uh, you get the list, you pass it on to the other people. You see? So um, you do that, you know. And um, we'll go through some things. We got these new prophecies. Now, today I'm going to produce a book. Also, now, um, when I was up in New York, one of the psychics, I think it's, uh, she's in town now, Sister Shakura. Yeah, anyway, that you need to start doing is getting you uh, these. It's a copper uh, rod with a crystal on the end and a stone at the bottom. And these are going to be your weapons. You can, um, you can kill people with them. Well, not you, but the melanin carriers. You see what I'm saying? If, if, you, if, if you got the chosen seed of Israel, hey, how you doing? <laughs> if you got that, you don't have to worry about that. But I'm saying you have to back these people up off you. Plus that copper you need it for protection and these things. So uh, there's a brother that makes them. So once I show you the rod, I'm going to pass out some of these cards. And um, you get in touch with the brother, you can pass some out. You can pass some out. These are the actual uh, helicopter things. Uh, now, listen, for, uh, to, to save paper... If you are with somebody, okay. make sure you get one, you understand what I'm saying? And then you and that other person you with can get it copied. Don't just, you take one, the other person take, because you've got a lot of people up in here. And that way you can save paper if you're with somebody, you know, like that. So if, if you're with the group, then you one take one out of each group. Check? All right. Um, so we, like I said, we have that, um, the helicopter thing going down. I got a lot of good stuff. Now, some of the stuff that I'm going to be dealing with, I'm going to be dealing with a lot of prophecies today. I'm also going to be dealing with some stuff from London, England, that's going to, uh, some stuff from London, England, because there's supposed to have been a slideshow today, but I think what it, what is, what it, what it, what is going on, and I, I have gotten a little advanced, and I think that what it is is in the last days we need to break this thing down to the least common denominator so we can know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for everybody. I think everybody needs to go back to the basics because I even went back to some books that I read two or three years ago when I first started lecturing and stuff is right in there because your mind is always expanding because also what happens is you, you come in and you read some stuff on the level that you own and then you take it literal. You always take things literal at first and then what you might have read and you might have understood it might be another meaning, it might be metaphysical. So what I'm going to explain today when I get into the Bible scriptures is a lot of these scriptures are metaphysical. And we're going to give you some terms that you need to write down if you got a pencil and piece of paper later on. And these terms, did you find it? Uh, if these terms are ter oh, did you, oh, wait a minute, did you look in the uh, front part, that little glove compartment thing on, on the side of the seat? Well, I'll try to find it. Uh, these terms that you, you know, certain terms, then when you go back in your Bible, you look them up and remember, 98% of your Bible is not talking about a story at all. It's not talking about a history of a people back then. It's a metaphysical thing that's handed down from generation to generation. And most of the people that put together the Bible, they ended up making, they made, made what you call metaphysical, timeless scriptures and turned it into literal history. So you've been getting your history from the Bible. But the Bible is only a few years old and they only have a history that goes back to 6,000 years. Well, hell, we was finished at 6,000 years. The stuff that I got here, uh, new stuff coming out of London, England, and I'm getting ready to put in my new book, I'm going to put some on the tape, is uh, the first, I think the first one is 15 million years. See what I'm saying? 15 million years. So, um, uh, so, so, I mean, that's, uh, so, the Bible is, a, is a, a book of the soul. All of religious documents are books of the soul. It doesn't necessarily literally mean moral doctrine as far as what you're supposed to learn how, you know, I get all this stuff and then I just went back and looked right in the Bible and man, the stuff that started coming, well, this is what they're talking about right here. Here's the Stargate, here's this, here's that. Um, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna take an intermission and when I go out, I'm gonna go back out to the car and try to look for this crystal wand. And then I'm going to pass out the brother. Brother Juju is another brother. He's a psychic, and he gets stuff off of what they call the astral realm, and they tell him what to, they tell him what to make. And he's one of the best jewelry makers in the world. 
As a matter of fact, when the King Tutankhamun uh, Tut, um, the, the, you remember the Tutankhamun exhibit came in 1979. They had him to do the jewelry, and the stuff that they were shipping over from Kemet, his jewelry looked more authentic. His stuff looked like the stuff, you know, they, they mass produce stuff, but they got like one or two little patterns, and they mass produce all this stuff. You can see the same thing over and over again. His stuff was looking like it came all the way from Kemet 2,000 years ago. So they used him, and he's, he's been in the Smithsonian, so, but the thing about him is it's more than just a craftsmanship of him just putting stuff together of what looks good. He actually gets stuff off the astral plane, so the spirits tell him what to make. So he made this crystal wand and all, and it's one of the best ones I've seen. I mean, you know, I've seen some, and it's a small miniature one, and I, I think I got it out in the car. But anyway, um, for some of those people that want to um, get some of those things, I'm going to pass out his card for you to get it also, too. So uh, I guess the first thing we'll... So he came over here to make him some money. He knew there was going to be a gateway opening up in 1956. Now, there's a book you need to get, it's a very big, good book you need to get, called Secret of the Andes. Write it down. Secret of the Andes by Brother Philip. Now, Brother Philip is George Hunt Williamson. The other book you're going to get is Other Tongues of the Flesh. Now, why did I suggest these books? Because I understand that most people might not know about Kemet, Egypt, Babylonia, but you know about the Bible. You don't have to read the Bible, but you don't heard enough Bible verses quoted at you since you were what's called it. You just say, okay, yeah, I say that in the Bible. Now, Secret of the Andes, in this book, he's going to be dealing with a lot of biblical scriptures. You understand? So this is a good book. This is a very good book. There's a, a chapter in here on the wanderers. That's you. You need to get that. There's a chapter in here on the migrants that is talking about the people from Syria. Real good book you need to get. As well as a book called Extraterrestrials and Biblical Prophecy. So you want to get these things because if you're going to, let's just say, just so happen... Not so much. They say don't, the Bible say don't cast pearls to swine. They mean because some people, they feel comfortable in what they believe, and they will actually resent you for telling them knowledge, you understand, that's going to make them accountable for whom much is given, much is required. But let's say you got a person that's searching. I mean, that person needs to be, he doesn't need a scripture that's going to, going to be over his head. But if you give him something that, that coincides with the Bible, then you can lock them in. You understand what I'm saying? So now the book, Extraterrestrials and Biblical Prophecy by George Shellhorn is the one that you want to get. Just keep that in mind. It's one that you might want to get, as well as Secret of the Andes by Brother Philip. Brother Philip is the alias name of George Hunt Williamson, and that's not even his name, because in the 50s when he was writing these things, in these things, you know, he'd get killed for writing UFO material, so he had to, he had to give... Alias names. So now, those are some good books. He had made another book, Secrets of the Lion, and all. So, what the deal is, is um, you want to deal with these things in these particular scriptures that's going to explain some of this particular stuff. Now, you understand what I'm saying? And it says, call Ashtar Command. Now, it says also that one of the Ashtar Command is called Commander Hanton. And Hanton has been in communication for, uh, with several channels for some time. Channel is several psychics. Now, one of the keys is Hanton is nothing but a government propaganda type people. You see? Now, to counter this, the first thing they say, however, there are a group of negative Syrians. Now, who are they talking about? First of all, when I read this little thing, it's, at first they say negative Syrians, you think they're talking about some, some, some aliens. You see what I'm saying? But then they start double talking. There's a group of ne negative Syrians impersonating Hanton, which has caused much confusion. You understand what I'm saying? Well, the only confusion, if this is the government talking about, the only confusion is somebody talking about, we tired of this doggone junk and we ready to get up and take our planet back. Right? See what I'm saying? We need to take our planet back. I'm telling you. I'm telling you this here. This is a glorious day. We need to be rejoicing. You see what I'm saying? We need to be rejoicing. And the reason why I say that is because I come before you without a dime. You understand what I'm saying? I had four dollars. I gave it to my brother. He went on out to Melinda Square Mall. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and all right, it's here and all. And I got the pink slip the other day. So now look, what I need to do is I need to find me a, 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 a place 
Let me know if you can find some houses and stuff. You see what I'm saying? Because I, I need, you know, some houses for sale, mainly in town because I'm going to be moving and stuff because I'd say, well, hell, if I'm going to pay some rent and I ain't got no air, you understand what I'm saying? And, and, and ain't got no kind of stuff like this and all, you know, because so no water because they cut off the water because the man didn't pay the bill and all that kind of junk. I said, okay, I, shit, I ain't paid since February. So now. <laughs> Anyway, we was waiting on it. I said, well, I tell you, I said, this chill, we, we, we just wait until they, 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 they put the thing on the door, and they put it on the door the other day. Now, I'm, I'm saying these things because I have no reason to sit up and try to lie and stuff because I'm not making no money off this thing. So I'm not like these charlatans that's coming out because I ain't making no money. You see what I'm saying? So now the key what I'm trying to say is, is this. And what drives me is, is the love for black people. See what I'm saying? Love for black people. And I'm just not just talking about the black people that you see on TV and make you proud because you see Michael, you know, Michael Jordan jumping a ball or you see some senator or you see some type of person. Don't not have to necessarily have to be a senator or something, but somebody doing something. That's not the reason why. But I, I'm talking about like I, I went into the place the other day last night when I said I told you I was in, went into um, um, uh, uh, the place to get a sub and this sister up there, she got, now she got this this big weed bundle, bouffant bundle on her hair. She got black hair up under here and this big gold thing sticking up on her head. And I'm looking and I'm saying, yeah, it look crazy, but, but that's the one I see the beauty in. You see what I'm saying? The people that don't, the people that, that, that you know, the ones that most of the people will make fun of. You see what I see brother staying on, the, you know, I saw a brother, man, the brother on the corner, you know, and he come up and all, he want to bump some money because he got to get him a couple of pig ear sandwiches. You see what I'm saying? Those are, that's the beauty of this thing. But that, that's what I, I look at them, I say, God damn it, they're God's people. It's perfect. You know, I look and I say it's perfect. It's perfect because they, because they talk about a lost multitude. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody in the world fits the description of a lost people but us. So that lets you know that this is it. It's the God people. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm in love with that. You know? So that's, that's, that's what drive me is. I, still, I say I ain't got nothing, I got black people. You understand what I'm saying? Spite what they do to you. Spite all this type of thing because I'm on another level than that. You see what I'm saying? How can I blame a person for being a total asshole when I know that he was robbed of memory from slavery? Hell, we don't even supposed to even be here. So that in itself ought to let you know that it's got to be a divine thing. You see what I'm saying? So now that's the key to this whole thing is you, you and basically, if you're going to do something, get high, just fall in love with black people, say, well, hell, I, shoot, I just know I'm in the, race, in the right race for this thing. See what I'm saying? That's the key. You know, we hook, I mean, look, we are hooked up. You know what I'm saying? We hooked up. We ain't got nothing to worry about. They see this come and say, just rejoice. You are the chosen people. For the mere fact that you're the first on earth, meaning who could be chosen? You the potent stuff. You see what I'm saying? And let's say if you got a bucket of oil, the primal oil, you understand? And then you got different fragrances come, let's say, in, we're talking about perfumes now. So you got the potent stuff. And you got different fragrances that come out for a thousand years, but you still got the potent stuff. But yet the earth said, no, I'm coming. I'm coming to get my stuff. He's going to bypass all of that, and he's going to go back to what he first, the real deal juice, because he can't use that watered down stuff. So that's letting you know on a high level, on you've got to understand for the mere fact that we are in this, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You got to start looking at it this way. For the mere fact that we're dying and we're in the wretched, it's beautiful. Now, let's go, let's, let me read this one time, because I'm jump ahead of myself. Now, it says that they have caused much confusion. The Hanton impersonator is spreading a message of doom through written materials and that he has dictated. Now, all of a sudden, now, this, is, this has become different. It, at first, it said it was some Syrians, and now it's some person on earth. You understand? He's double-talking. This typical negative extraterrestrial activities, now they say extraterrestrial, they got to put that in there because most people are still scared of spaceships and all of that. So they can get you to be on their side by telling you that something is coming to kill you. You understand what I'm saying? But like I said, hey, first thing come on, and if it, and if it, and if it cut that head off, I'm down with that. I'm down with anything coming to doggone get this man off the doggone earth. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm down with that. Hell, you see what I'm saying? If I see the man with them horns, <laughs> and he bypassed me and go and cut that brother neck. I said, hey, I'm down with you. Let's go get a cold one. And we discussed this thing. Now. <laughs> now. The typical negative extraterrestrial activity, their primary purpose 
is to undermine faith in your government. Now, right there is the, that's in the story. You need to slow down the page. You understand what I'm saying? But you know what I mean? But what kind of fool? Now, that's like I say, that is dialectically opposite from the Bible. The Bible talks about doom, destruction, and they talk about those people that's conspirators that conspire against those good doers. That's all through your Bible. And I don't care what religious book you pick up, Quran, Bible, Bada Megiddo, Upanishads, Book of Coming Forth by Day, whatever, it's going to say the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? So that ought to let you know that this is nothing but the government trying to deal with some stuff here. Now, you already have emerged into the New World Order. They're giving you the first thing with the license tag thing, like I said. They started picking up these cars. They said it's going to wait till the end of May and start picking up these cars with the 94 tags and charging them $1,000. Now, can you imagine somebody impounding your car and charging you $1,000 for a piece of paper? Now, here you go out to the store and you buy you a car and spend money and ain't finished paying for it yet. And yet, there's a piece of paper that if you had a good color Xerox machine, you can make it yourself, and a person is going to impound your car. This person say, I'm taking your stuff. See what I'm saying? Off of a piece of paper. But yet, we don't question it because we believe in the law. You understand what I'm saying? We believe in the law. Another thing, because, you know, a lot of this militia stuff is getting ready to go down, and then they're going to transfer all the militia stuff because it's actually for you. You see? You notice on the news, they want to get a person, like Timothy McVeigh or this other guy, Nichols, whatever. What they do? They'll put out all the information you believe in, and oh, yeah, he did it, he did it. Then they'll go, and you'll see, you'll see some person in a room with some subtitle on the TV screen. He'd be in a little black room, face, you know, in a black room. You can't see nothing. You can see his silhouette, but you can't see him. And you'll see the subtitle. And they say, well, this is one of his friends, close friends that knew about him, that didn't want to be seen on the camera, right? He didn't want to be seen on the camera. So we decided to, to, to disclose his identity or whatever. You ever thought about this? Who in the hell is say that that is a close friend? What we got is, they go and say, we got to think of a lie on somebody. So they can come in here and say, we're going to pick this brother right here. They see him on the street. Pull you over for a speeding ticket. Get your name and all this kind of stuff. They got some crime. Somebody robbed something. Next thing they know, they say, they, 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 put, give you the, they, they pin the crime on you. That's why you got to go see this movie, The Glass Shield. How many people saw this movie yet? The Glass Shield with, with Ice Cube. Anybody, well, I'm going to get in that in a few minutes, but let me, let me explain, this, explain this. So what they do, depending on you, is they get in there and they say, well, we need somebody to come in to be a person that's going to be his best friend. So all they're going to do is they get the TV producer, somebody, maybe somebody black, or maybe some white people because you can hang out with some white boys. But you don't know it's dark. If, if they can't really front where well, you can see the silhouette is black, they put that little ball over, that little black dot, that little blue thing. And then they put the subtitle. So they go back right in the room where the people work and the TV producers and what they do. They put that little thing on there and they, and they say what they got to say and you believe you think it's a close friend. And this is how they set you up. That's why you got to go see this movie called A Glass Shield. Go pay, pay the money. Because now this movie is, is saying, it's the same brother that made the, the movie To Sleep With Anger. He didn't get a lot of juice off that, but this one is back, and I think it's got a... He, he was smart this time. He put Ice Cube in it. Automatically, it's a seller. But the movie is about a black police officer, and when he get on the police force, he got to sell out to keep his job. So he, along with the white people, tried to set up Ice Cube, and Ice Cube just, Cube just pulled up to the um, station to get some gas. You see what I'm saying? Got to go see this movie, Glass Shield. You see, um, it's playing at Lennox and a couple other places, but it's showing you, and every black police officer who ain't sold out yet need to go see this thing. Or the ones that did sell out, they need to, because I know they'll be saying, hey, but I'm talking about most people need to see this particular movie that's, 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 that's coming out. So this license tag thing is showing you that it's New World Order. All they got to do is make it law. They tell you that this is a free country, but yet you got more laws in this country than any place ever in the history of the earth. So you say you free, but then again it's a law. And no, there's no such thing as freedom of speech. You pay a price for that. You see what I'm saying? You say, I got freedom of speech and freedom of dress. But when you go apply for that job, you don't go up in there with some cut-off damn short pants and a, and a, and a t-shirt on, say, freaknik. 
you know that you pay a price for that, you're not going to get the job, right? Right? Of course you can do it. Of course you can go in your house and cuss your mama out. But there's certain laws that say that you can't do that. I'm talking about our universal laws. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say is there's no such thing as freedom of speech. They had a whole thing on TV in, in Britain, uh, I think it was 92, about censorship in America. And America got all mad about it. You see, and it was in Britain. You see, censorship in America. So there's no such thing as, um, as uh, 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 freedom of speech. So now we're going to have these energy wands, these things that you can go and zap these people because this energy is going to get real good this summer and you can zap these people with this wand. And you can clean yourself with it. You can take it and open your chakras up with it. It's an energy wand. So we're going to be selling those. I'm going to pass out these cards to you and you get in touch with the brother and have him to make you some. Check? All right. Saying through an hourglass, what happens? It goes down to the bottom, and that's why this is called Malkuth, the kingdom on earth. You, this is the kingdom right here. It's just going to transform itself because this is the lowest sphere of the earth, of the cosmos, and this is the lowest sphere of what you call the tree of life. Check? All right, let's go on. So, certain things are going out. His cycle is failing all over the place. Now, let's get into some biblical scriptures. How much time we got? When you want to do the break thing? 20 minutes? Okay, that's good enough for me to do the biblical scripture. Let's go with this thing. Uh, we'll deal with some of these right now. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Y'all bear with me. That's Elijah. We're going to go into a whole bunch of stuff today. So y'all bear with me. You know, I believe in giving a person their money's worth or uh, whatever. Your time, even if you ain't paid nothing. You see what I'm saying? Now, let's see what we got here. Uh, first thing we're going to deal with, we're going to deal with the Passover. We're going to deal with this Passover. So now, that Passover is going to be in Exodus 12, verse 12 and 13. That's Exodus 12, verse 12 and 13. Now, I'm doing these scriptures where I'm trying to tell you another way to read your Bible. It's all in there. But you have been reading your Bibles because you are trained to read your Bible from Sunday school. And you are trained Sunday school stories. And when the Harvard Normal of the Freedmen's Bureau that started both the black colleges and the black churches, when they started the black churches, they may came in and they taught them the interpretation of the Bible on a literal plane. That way you don't get nothing. You stay stupid all your life. You see what I'm saying? When I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my shoes and walk all over God's heaven. <laughs> Who set up the black churches? The Freedmen's Bureau. Because they can dictate how far you go with what they give you. The Bible, I'm not anti-Bible. I'm not anti-Scripture. I'm anti-interpretation of the Scripture. You understand? Because you can teach a child that Mickey Mouse is God. And if you don't interrupt him, and you support it all his life, when he get 35, Mickey Mouse is God, unless you have somebody to intercede to tell them that, hey, that ain't what it is. So now, they set it up, and they've been doing fairy tales ever since. But it's all in the book if you got the juice. You understand what I'm saying? You sophisticated people now. You see what I'm saying? You got every position filled in America, but what? But Speaker of the House and President, basically everything else in America you've done. So don't come and cop out and say that you're not a sophisticated people now. <laughs> you're supposed to read it on another level. Okay? Now, this is the Passover coming out of Exodus. It says that the Lord's Passover on the night shall pass through the land of Egypt and will kill the firstborn of every man and beast. Thus, I will execute and judge, um, execute judgment. And as for you, when I shall see the blood, I shall pass over you. The moral blow shall not touch you. And when I am, when I strike, the, when I, the moral blow shall not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now we know that based on chronological history, there is no people that was in bondage in Egypt for no 400 years. But when you take 
Slavery up to now, you know that it was a prophetic history because the scripture came, Moses was what? He was a high priest of Amon Ra and a defector. Now, it's a beautiful story because it's not as if to say that the Egyptian religion was evil or the Hebrew religion was evil. Just like you got a brother that step out of the Baptist church and go over to the Episcopalian, you understand what I'm saying? And, and do this here, that's all you had. You had different schools. You had the Ethiopian line of Hebrewism coming out of greater Ethiopia. You had the comedic thing. And when one said, well, he just said, I'm going to step over to these black people. And I'm going to give them the same, it's the same ideology, you understand? Same concepts, it's just different mythologies to bring it into view. That's all it was. There was no such thing as, oh, it was an evil, this religion became corrupt. No. Is this a person say, I'm going down the street. I'm tired of the way you running things politically. Check. Check. You get it? You see, America, but what was the greatest empire? Egypt. Kemet, right? And we know that America was fashioned off of Kemet. Benjamin, Benjamin Banner Kabay. Remember? It was fashioned off the Kemet. So it is the new Egypt, right? One was righteous. One was what is, is the pit. You understand what I'm saying? Of all horror. Now, now he's saying he's judging. What does he mean in this particular biblical scripture? He says, and this is the key, and as for you, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Now, what you need to understand is when you study the myth of the Holy Grail, they talk about the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ is called the royal bloodline or the blood royal. And it's talking about the melanated blood. You understand what I'm saying? So, they are saying in actuality, those who have the black dot, I will pass over you. See, it's a metaphysical script. You understand what I'm saying? Now, Moses then took the blood and flung all over the people, saying, this blood is a covenant which the Lord has made with you and them in his book. When he took the blood and flung it all over the people, in actuality, Moses is actually, it's a metaphysical thing that's talking about the people that would be scattered throughout the land because we scatter throughout the land. So they don't have to have a group of people that they paint some blood on a door. You understand what I'm saying? You got it, you can be in Arizona. You understand what I'm saying? People just fall out dead around you, keep on going. Check. <laughs> All right, let's go on. This is gonna be in, uh, let me get this, this thing right. Uh, this is gonna be in Psalms chapter 11, Verse 8 to 22. Psalms 11, 8, 22. All right. It says, The Zion shake, for Zion shake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem sake, I don't know why I said a shake for, I got it. For Zion's sake, I shall not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will speak out. The stone which the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Now, if you study alchemy, there's something called the philosopher's stone. The philosopher's stone in alchemy is talking about melanin. Your kaaba that they're talking about your Kaaba that you see in Mecca, when they, which is the basis of melanin. So when they talk about the stone, when they talk about the stone, they're talking about melanin in you. It's called a philosopher's stone in alchemy. Let me give you a good book on alchemy. This is a show enough ass whipping book, <laughs> but you gotta study it, but see it comes from England. See, England is the intellectual capital of white people. They over here, they, they say that white people over here is the Jeff Bodine. 
<laughs> Just like they got a record store on each corner here, they got bookstores in England. So now, if you want to get some good books, you got to go to England. That's where I go and get, that's where I get all my stuff. This book is called, his name is, if you want to learn about alchemy, alchemy is the study of melanin. See what I'm saying? See, I was telling the brothers, I said, well, you know, hey, I told them at the melanin conference. I said, well, look, it ain't but so far you can go into chemical stuff. I said, if you want to understand it, melanin, you study alchemy. This has happened to be one of the most simple books. They wrote this book like Dick, Sally, and Jane. The name of it, J-O-H-A-N-E-S, Johannes Holman, Hellman, H-E-L-M-O-N-D, Johannes Hellman, Alchemy Unveiled. H-E-L-M-O-N-D, Hellmund. It says the light, the light out of darkness is called forth. Now, you see the black dot? You see the lotus come up. Black and gold. Black and gold. Batman. Got it? There's going to be some stuff in here on the philosophers. The philosopher's stone. The philosopher's stone. Now, he broke the seal. His name was um, uh, Fucanelli. His name was Fucanelli. Some guy from Italy broke it. And, and he, and um, when he broke that seal on that philosopher's stone, the mystery, the, the CIA and everybody hunt, tried to hunt him down and he disappeared. They couldn't find him. Now, look at what this book says. You probably heard me read this on some, some, of, my, um, some of my lectures. But uh, I want to, uh, yeah, okay. And it says that the condition, the condition of the alchemy of blackness whose central darkness reply through and extends to two days and, uh, it spent, and extends over three days and nights, even through the blackness that lasts for 40 days. Even Jesus remained for 40 days in his resurrection on earth before he went to heaven. Therefore, you must go through the gates of darkness if you want to go and attain the paradise of white, not talking about white people, they're talking about the light and halo. Then you get, it's called the shadow. That's in you. It's called the shadow. So when you read this Bible script, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The death is not talking about a physical death. It's talking about dying from one level to another level. Yea, do I walk through the fat valley of the shadow of death, I should fear no evil. The shadow is talking about you going through the melanin of your mind. You understand what I'm saying? When you see, that's a melanin scripture telling you that it's about melanin. The you see what I'm saying? But who, yea, shall I walk through the valley of the shadows of death? Israel. Right? The followers of Jesus. Is Isis. Which Isis? Ra in El, the mother, the father, and the son of the father. El, which means father. So it's the mother, the son, and the son of the son. Isis, Ra, in El, Israel. Because it was what? All one people down the Nile Valley. You understand what I'm saying? Check. Now, give you another scripture right quick. Let's see here. What we got here. Uh, see if I can get another scripture. Um... It was a real good one. Uh, let me, I'm going to tell you the book. I want you to buy this book. I got this book the other day, and boy, it's a damn good book. And you can relate to it because it's called The Armageddon Script. The Armageddon Script, Power of Prophecy in the Secret Life of Jesus. Now, remember that when they talk about Christ, they talk about the one to be in disregard just a person set in time and try to understand what's coming back. So now, um, there's another one. When you hear the word Jerusalem, Jerusalem means the soul. When you hear Israel, it means the black people. You see what I'm saying? Covenant, covenant also means the concealment and it means a covenant of black people that has a covenant is the black dot also. You get the word Mount Zion. 
Mount Zion, the mount is a pyramid. And the pyramid is a symbol of melanin. So when you say Jesus on Mount Zion, it's talking about the cross and over part. You see, these are biblical scriptures that you need to start reading from a metaphysical thing. Anytime you hear Christ, reply it to yourself. Because it's a book of the soul. So when they say Jesus, you're thinking of a person, they're talking about the Christ that's in you, the Son. So when you hear the Son in you, apply it to yourself. You see? The whole book of Revelation is talking about a guidebook of the soul. So you apply that thing to yourself. This book on the Armageddon script, they're going to deal with some other stuff in here I'm going to go into in a few minutes on the Jean Dixon prophecies that she was dealing with. The uh, Jean Dixon. Now let's deal with the second coming. The second coming means that black people were once God. John chapter 10, verse 34, 36. Is it not written in your law that ye are gods? Right? Everybody heard me say that before, right? John chapter 10, uh, I'll, I'll get it in a few minutes. You know the, you know the ones. Um, uh, I always say it. I should have started out with it. But anyway, it means that you were gods. You plummeted in a vibratory rate that shut all your spiritual centers down. But now you're coming back into your light. The second coming means you coming back. You say, I'm waiting on the second coming. You don't, who the hell you think coming back but you? You might have a Messiah that might come back and lead the way, but the Messiah is not to be worshipped. He just a brother that's, that get his sins back in his head and he can stumble in the door and let you out. That's all it means. You see, because you're God. You're going to be one with God. Check? Check. Now, the second coming will simply mark the emergence of a new archetype of the collective Black human consciousness. Archetype of the collective unconsciousness is talking about the gateway inside of you. I know I'm starting to sound redundant on my lectures because what happens is when you first start out, you, you know, you, you search it. But when you found certain keys and you, when, you, when you reduce all the stuff outside and you put it into the body, that's all it is. It's talking about you. So now the lectures... You can't go and speak to the people, not unless you tell the people the ultimate. It's about you. Not you worshiping anybody, not somebody, you following anybody, you understand? And not whether this God over here is wrong, not whether this God, but it's talking about the God in you. So now, since you hit upon the key, you can't go back, because the responsibility is on you for, for whom much is given, much is required. So the second coming is talking about yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Now, five minutes. I'm going to give out two rituals. I'm going to give out a money ritual. I know all y'all need money. <laughs> but some people already know this ritual. The simple ritual, the Legba ritual. You go to a crossroad on a Monday. Four corners, where the crossroad is. Four corners. You take four pennies. You put on each corner. Right? Put on each corner. Then you ask a Legba... For what? Financial lead or financial gain. And it takes about a week, but you will get that money. You understand what I'm saying? That's only in dire straits, but that's what you do. You go to that crossroad and put four pennies. And remember, it's the God of Legba. Now, there's a good book up here. I don't know if they... This is the one that you need to get. Spells and rituals of the Santeria, the practical ones. Why? Because the other ones, there's a lot of things from the continent you can't get. But if you get the spells and there's practical spells and rituals of the Santeria, there's stuff in here. How to get a man. Yeah, I know that's a good one. Smells like, uh. How to get a woman. How to get money. How to get people from messing with you. How to destroy evil spells. How to get good luck. Everything you need. Spells for doggone rituals for getting a job. Rituals for, for, for going through that interview, all that is in that book. The Practical Spells and Rituals of the Santeria by Margie, what's that? Gonzalez, Gonzalez, Whipper, W-I-P-P, -P, Whippler, W-I-P-P-L-E-R. One, one of the good ones to get that particular book. Spells it now. I'm a piece of paper bag and tear that paper bag off. Write that person's name on it, and that person will not mess with you no more. Also, 
You can do that with a brother that's trying to kill you, or if you got that old man in your house and want to beat on you and you got to have the restraining order, but you know that that don't work, put that thing in there and it don't work. So you just take it and take the brown piece of bag, write his name on it, put the bottle of coffee, you know, the brown on top of it on, on your altar. Uh, shoot, I gave that to one of my friends up in um, um, Indiana. Shoot, they had to get a on grocery bag, all the niggas they had. <laughs> Messing with them. <laughs> yeah. Hey, huh? You have to God. You I'm not sure, do you? You heard you did? Uh, I, I think this worked. This, is, that, is that about all, right? That's it. That's it. So, what's that? Uh, we'll give you one of those in a few when we come back. We'll give you one of those also. What we're going to do, we're going to take a little break. What we want to do is, somebody get me a hat. And you can do the little hat pass thing here. Hey, who want to take up the honors of, uh, of doing the hat pass? No, we we'll do that. Okay, black man. Yeah. Give this man a black hand. Yeah. Now we need a hat pass. I have a hat. Man, somebody give me a hat. It don't make no difference, gonna pass the hat. You all just give me, you know.